Like like classic fucking shareholders, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, <laughs> well, we want it faster. I literally knew it was gonna take a while, so I cheated God and extended your lifespan. Like, yeah. Like, exactly. what, what do you mean you want it faster? <laughs> Let me know when I'm hot. You're Nico, hot. Quattro, you're, you're hot. I did Ethan's counting. We're, we're, we're live. You asked for a count and I gave you a count in. Okay, I'm friggin' knocking this one out of the park. Call me agent setting you up. Agent 54321. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, 47. Your destination will be the weekly Lore Boys podcast recording session in Montreal, Canada. After flagrant disregard for important facts in Stardew Valley and having not covered Green Lantern or <laughs> Vampire Hunter D yet, our client has asked that you eliminate the three hosts of the podcast. Your targets will be James Miller, the youngest of the three, a lover of retro games, real stories, and a man with a crippling addiction to MMOs. He can be found in his basement apartment or walking his female husky Ice at a nearby dog park. Next, you must take out Peter O'Donoghue, a self-taught mediocre cartoonist and exotic pet aficionado. The recent pandemic has made him rely entirely on his car, a Mazda 3, for transport. He can also be found making regular runs to a local corner store to buy cheap imported beer from Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you need to take out the founder of the Lore Boys, Ethan Palmer. Ethan no longer lives in Montreal, but our client states he is coming to the city with his wife to meet with the other hosts and watch battle bots. He too will be trying to re- he too will be relying on a vehicle, in- but the poor weather may slow him down. All three boys in the same location is a rare opportunity for each seven. Three hosts, three targets, one location. I'll leave you to prepare. Jeez. That's I mean, we right. Don't, we don't stand a chance, guys. No, no, we're <laughs> fucked. And I, I'm, I hate how accurate that I'm either walking my dog or in my apartment. That's like 99 percent of my life for the last two years. I mean, we were just off air talking about how excited you were to not have another place to go to during your week. So yeah. yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. And I'm I am the youngest. I didn't I didn't even realize that. It's true. Yeah, why why do you think we call you baby James? James uh-huh. the big old baby. Ba- yeah. James, James shit in his pants, baby. Yeah. Change his diaper because <laughs> Jimmy Piss Boy's got shit in his pants. That's what we always call I put, you. I, I put a diaper on for the show whether I need it or not. Yeah. Well you just never know. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I, I've never been in, I mean that's not true anymore. I was gonna say I've never been in a car accident, but like I always click in the seatbelt, dude. Better safe than sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right? You were in a car I mean, accident Jamie's- recently. Jamie yeah. still makes us pause the podcast whenever he's got to make boom boom, but he doesn't. <laughs> I don't does leave. His- I don't leave. I just <laughs> sit like focus in my chair. Yeah, we just have to watch him like furrow, like furrow his brow on Discord camera. You can literally <laughs> see my bathroom from. I know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's right, everybody. Uh, this week we'll be going over the Hitman series. Uh, this is a request, actually that I really wanted to do because I love the newer games. Uh, This is a request from Shenanigans, uh, I guess weasel enthusiast on our Discord. And of course, uh, backed up once again, God King of Hype Men, Han Dolo. Um, If you'd like to to submit a request, head to loreboys.com slash about or follow the link in this episode's description to get to our Discord. Uh, Also, hello and thank you very much to our newest patrons, uh, SD, uh, like the card Basically and the card. AJ checks. So thank you both very much. Um, I know you're both in discord. Hello. Uh, yeah. Happy to have you. Yeah. So fellas, what's your, uh, familiarity with heat man? I've uh, played one game. I think it was Hitman three. I, play. I think when I started, did Hitman three come out? The first Hitman three came out in like 2006. I started a game and it was in Paris. And you had to like walk into a mansion or something, and you were outside in the front, um, and you're that bald yeah. guy. Like, do you remember which one that is? That's the first. That is the first mission of the newest Hitman one from 2016. Yeah. Okay, I tried yeah. that one, and like I got caught twice, and I was like, I really don't feel like sneaking around. I'd rather just play another game. So that that's yeah. I I know it's fun, but I was just too impatient to to let it stick, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's I mean, not the most recent one, is but it's the first game in the most recent trilogy. Okay, that that's me with every stealth game. It's like 
why can't I just run in? Like, <laughs> I just want to run in and shoot everybody all the time. <laughs> yeah, I was watching Hitman Three um, speed runs because like some streamers that I watch just like playing that game for whatever reason, and it was pretty interesting. Um, and you can get going pretty fast if you know how every in and out of the game works. But before then, I guess not so much. But yeah, yeah. I, I watched the no clip documentary, which is like Daniel Dwyer's series on YouTube, where he interviewed the people who make Hitman. Um, they consider Hitman a puzzle game, which is why it is replayable. And once you kind of get the motions down, you can you can bust it wide open. Right. It is puzzle primarily, according to the people who make it, it's puzzle, not stealth. So if I'm looking at, at, at your camera... I could probably kill you with the brick wall, maybe with something in the aquarium. Maybe that lamp, I could, like, zap you or something. Um, yeah, expose the wire while I'm changing my aquarium water. Right, right? and then put it in, and... Boom, bzz, yeah. Yeah, there goes yeah. the axolotls, too. And me, yeah. hopefully. Because you do get penalized on Hitman for non-target kills, so they would ruin your score. Oh. Uh, axolotls don't have souls, so... They wouldn't. They wouldn't actually impact your impact your score at all. Okay, so I gotta get all of them out first, and then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. I've always I've always looked at and man. And again, I played one. I think we owned one on like PS3. Maybe probably maybe PS2. Uh, I don't know if that's even possible. Yeah, the we series own... started. This it's a, it is a 22 year old series, wow. which I thought was yeah. fucking ridiculous. There are seven games. I I always considered it a puzzle game. But there, there is a lot of like waiting to the puzzles where it's like timing puzzles rather than like, oh, think it through and you'll be able to just like put the pieces together. It is like, oh, you kind of do have to like follow this guy, see, see his whole route, figure out what, what he, where he goes and what he does and then figure out when he goes to check the aquarium and then you, you have to electrocute it just at the right time or whatever, right? Yeah. So we will get into the actual main mechanic because the main mechanic ends up being canonized, which is interesting. So let's not talk too, too much about it right now at the beginning. Uh, it's called social stealth, but uh, we'll get into it later. Oh, okay, um, so so <laughs> electrocuting aquariums is a core mechanic that is canonized, is what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. That's a mechanic <laughs> okay. I try to, to use too so I can stay in my basement Let's and just play stop. MMOs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we do got a shot against this Agent 47, huh? Jamie can beat him in his own game. <laughs> uh, so I knew about Hitman growing up. Uh, I had mentioned it uh, earlier, like off air, basically, uh, that my longest time friend Logan used to play Hitman Blood Money uh, when we were younger. Uh, and he always told me how awesome it was. But I have never actually played or even seen footage from an old Hitman game. Never seen it in person. Probably the same. Or, or even on YouTube. Same. But the, the head's not quite as round back then. Yeah, yeah, the 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 like kind of uh, pack of hot dogs wrinkles at the back of his neck don't really render as well when he's low poly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hitman is developed by IO Interactive in Denmark, uh, and these guys have also made other things that you may have heard of, like Kane and Lynch. Or oh, they're Dutch. Ne <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they're yeah, they're Hollish, I believe, uh, okay. is what we're calling them now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh kane and lynch and mini ninjas which apparently is good i like i've heard a lot about mini ninjas and like people like in the interviews have asked them like oh when's the next mini ninjas like cool whatever uh <laughs> primarily though they've been responsible for hitman i think they've only made three other games they made both kane and lynch's and then mini ninjas cool cool um io was once with publisher square enix but are unique uh kind of in the western square enix Corral, uh, in that they, Hitman didn't really change very much. So Square Enix bought a bunch of non-Asian developers and had them work on or revive older, highly respected franchises that they own the IP to now. Uh, that I think they got it through IDOS, basically. So like Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, and Thief. Um, Deus Ex, which I love, ended up here in Montreal. Uh, but the new games are prequels. They have a, like a completely new character, like new cast, new characters, except for one guy named Bob Page. Who is still a character in all uh, in both the new ones? That's Idos. Um, that's Idos Montreal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, hey, make they the work new for uh, four day work weeks. Those lucky guys. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. very jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tomb Raider uh, is still with Crystal Dynamics, except the third new one, which ended up at Idos Montreal. Um, Tomb Raider ended up kind of being like a reboot that was asking the question, like, what if Uncharted was needlessly violent really um and they got like new actors and new character uh i only played the first new to tomb raider and i thought it's pretty good 
Um, I don't really like Grimdark. Lara Croft, I'm like but kind of more is, into the... Yeah. At least in Uncharted, I could play as a dude, you know? Like, who wants yeah. to play as a woman? Like, I, <laughs> I, just, I just can't relate to her. She's got so many problems I just don't get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like falling what into a tiger trap. With... Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do when my period attracts bears, okay? Like... <laughs> I don't I think it's the other way around, but that'd be cool if it did attack bears. No, a track, track. sorry. Oh, okay. My uh my neckbeard accent got the better of me there. Yeah. <laughs> um I kinda like the idea of like an older, more Indiana Jones like confident like treasure hunter lady, like the younger the like way in over her head Lara Croft I don't particularly like. But the first game is fine. And I heard that the the like rise of the Tomb Raider of the and Birth of the Tomb Raider, whatever the fucking titles are. They're, they're not one, two, three. It's Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Somebody pull up the clip on this one. I and played then, one of them. And then, yeah, and then some other thing. An election like of the Tomb Raider or whatever. I liked it. You had to, like, you start off in the woods. You had to learn how to hunt. Then you had to, like, start going into tombs and stuff. And it was fun. I, for, yeah. I, I think it was just Tomb Raider, like, number one of the new trilogy I played. Yeah, I played the first of the new ones. But, like, that game changed a lot compared to the old ones. Uh, and then finally, Thief recast the actor who played the original protagonist, Garrett, uh, and then just released a game that answered the question, uh, what if Dishonored was bad before Dishonored 2 came out and showed us exactly what bad Dishonored looked like? <laughs> uh, but Hitman, by some miracle, stayed with the exact same team and even kept the same voice actor for the protagonist, Agent 47. Is it Vin Diesel? Oh. Uh, no, uh, this is, this whole, like, the reason I put this whole thing in is because I was, like, looking at stuff, and I found out this, like, kind of ridiculous coincidence in, like, why they cast this dude. Um, but, like, it's, it's pretty interesting that, like, of all the franchises that, that Square Enix had bought and kind of tried to Call of Duty-ish or, like, reboot, Hitman was the one that would just, like, didn't fucking change. It was the same people, same vision. Somehow, they managed to do it all. Um... And so, like, Agent 47 has, like, a fairly unique voice uh, that people recognize. Like, he's very iconic in his performance. Um, and he's been played by the South African and Danish actor David Bateson the entire time. Um, and the gameplay has remained largely the same for the past 21 years. Uh, like, there's, it's, there's disguises, there's stealth, silenced weapons, all that. You've got a singular target to take out, and you're penalized for killing people who aren't that person. So you don't stab someone in the back, you stab, stab someone in the bick? Or how you do you stab, stab someone yeah. in the bick? <laughs> yeah, I get exactly. it. <laughs> Piano wider? <laughs> uh, so, in the late 90s, uh, Bateson had moved from Sith Africa to Copenhagen, uh, and he caught wind of a voiceover role and decided to go in. Uh, he ended up being cast, and auditioning for the role is because the design of Agent 47 just happened to already look like him. He is just a scary looking <laughs> old guy. <laughs> nice. Talk about typecast. Uh, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, in another kind of uh, Square Enix bought a Western dev coincidence, Agent 47's voice is just David Bateson's regular voice. He is not, he is just acting, but he's not putting on a new voice. Just like Elias Tufexis, who plays Adam Jensen in the new Deus Ex games. Both these guys just sound like parodies of an action hero, basically. <laughs> this is how they sound normally. That sounds like such a great way just to cash in for the rest of your life if you get like a steady video game series where you yeah. just look like the guy, your voice is yourself you just got to go in and read some papers every couple days and then yeah it, it just like t talk to like it's like can you uh just come in uh david we need you to come in and um record some of the the scenes where you're disguised as a waiter uh we need you to mix a drink for a rich guy and just make vague threats the entire time because like like my favorite <laughs> thing about uh, uh, my favorite thing about age of 47 and like the social stealth aspect is like you might not like it i love disguising myself as a bartender and then just sitting there fingers tented waiting patiently for a guy to come by and then just like listen to the conversation where it's just like ah oh, yes the pinot grigio is to die for like he made yeah. like, <laughs> like when he's when you're interacting with your target agent 47 talks in like thinly thinly veiled threats the entire time <laughs> it's so fucking good yeah um, Th this year this year uh foreign diplomat Clearly uh, of a state which has uh, done some questionable actions recently. Probably a likely target for an assassination is here at this uh, ambassador's brunch. And uh, the yeah. waiter's just being thinly veiled threats at him. And nobody's like batting an eye, basically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I honestly think... Sorry, I've been so distracted because I've been 
uh, it drove me crazy that I couldn't figure out which Hitman game I've played, but I figured out it's Blood Money. So it was okay. The... Blood Blood Money's the one that like that's got the good rep. Like from as far as like the retro Hitmen's yeah. go, the Blood Money's the one that like I knew about, and the first ones don't have numbers associated with them, so it's like yeah. Hitman contracts, Hitman Blood Money, uh, whatever, Hitman uh, Code Agent Name Forty Seven or some Code shit. Code Name Forty Seven, yeah, is yeah. the first one. Yeah, um, yeah, but I. I... Didn't like it as a kid, but I also, you know, drank a monster a day and loved playing Halo and, and yeah. that stuff. So uh, I bet you I would actually really enjoy Hitman a lot more now, kind of for that reason, because I'm I'm tempered in my my old age, basically. And honestly, <laughs> like this is uh this is a, a statement to get my gamer card revoked, probably. But I would probably really like just looking up a guide and just like going through and like mm-hmm. just like no stress, like beating the missions, just like oh this is how, this is how you're supposed to do it. Good job, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, so like it, it, they have mission stories in the newer Hitman games where it's like, but again, you just need to come by it. Like if you don't walk past the camera crew, you'll never hear that they are missing their sound guy who is a bald man who looks suspiciously like Agent 47. So you can like find him <laughs> smoking weed in the garden, knock him out and push him into a pile of dry leaves and take his clothing, right? Like, yeah. like you, you need to find everything, but like, if you looked up a guide, I think you probably would like it because it is just like you have to solve a puzzle so that you can have a hilarious conversation with someone you're about to drown in a toilet. Like, <laughs> like, that's, it, like that's it, right? I have hilarious conversations like that with Jamie all the time. Yeah. <laughs> when, he, when we need to change his diaper during breaks, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, why, that's, why, that's why Jamie always uh, leaves his camera showing his bathroom door open so Pete can see in the background if he's in distress or anything like that yeah yeah, yeah. i gotta i gotta make sure to, nobody's choking him out Lee, if you're gonna kill me you gotta have a cool bathroom like one liner so i'll give you time to think of one before you actually kill me but yeah yeah, yeah. do you think that's my Try. toilet back there because it's no, no i mean i know the layout of your bathroom yeah, yeah. i've yeah. I've, I've, I've lived in your house before for weeks that's at a time true. True. is it just like a lo- is it like a looney tunes sheet where you actually just have a painting of a bathroom to yeah. actually <laughs> <laughs> to, to distract people i always put the green screen Just up guys full, full yeah. predators yeah. i've been playing lost ark it's actually garbage stacked to the ceiling that whole hallway so i have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you just you took a photo of your apartment while it was clean and you just projected behind you yeah. so no one knows <laughs> for work meetings mostly but I, I do it for you guys too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> you look like you could use a shower of bullets Oh, there you go. Not that's a bad. pretty good one. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right, or uh, what about like, while you're drowning me? Like, uh, here's a courtesy flush. And, yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> in the toilet. There you go, shithead. Oh, that's a good one. A also good one. a good one. Yeah. It like in Hitman, it would probably be something just like, sorry, I just used the washroom. It's a bit deadly in there. Would be like, a, like <laughs> would, it would be a lot more like yeah. the way that he, the way that he would word that yeah. <laughs> sort of All thing. Right. All right. So Io rebooted Hitman kind of like twice ish. Uh, the third Hitman game is a partial reboot of the first Hitman game. Which so this is like back in two thousand four. Uh, which obviously I had no idea. I haven't played those games. And then Hitman One, which Jamie played, came out in two thousand sixteen. The newest trilogy. To us, 2016, 2018, and 2021 are also a reboot. They're much more condensed and focused too. So, but we'll get into the differences between the old ones and the new ones. There's like the thir- the new trilogy is all on Game Pass, right? If you want to get into it now, that's that's where I played it because I have Hitman One and Two on Steam, and then the the Hitman trilogy is on Game Pass. Right. It's not really a trilogy. It is a it is a singular game. Uh, so like I recommend playing the trilogy starting in Paris, which is Hitman one, right. technically going all the way to the end. Like I got the, I like kind of refreshed my memory of the whole thing going through it. But, uh, because basically the end of Hitman two is an hour before the beginning of Hitman three. Like it's, it's yeah. one of those sort of things, a lot like mass effect, I guess. I remember being on a boat or something too. Like, going... yeah, the tutorial, the tutorial has a yacht in, um, that's right. Like a hangar or whatever. That's right. And then, like, yeah. when you walk by certain things, you can figure out other ways to kill things. They're like, check in on the lights going out. Or, like, uh, look out for the, the towel yeah. by the whatever majig. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's the mission stories. That's what I was talking about with, like, the camera guy. They're right. they're missing their bald boom operator. Where it's just, like, if you're in the right place at the right time in these games, you can get a directed experience. Right. Or you can just get fucking lucky. Like, I have some times where I'm just, like, 
desperately trying to figure out what to do and then my target just like wanders underneath a chandelier and you're like all right you just like whip a screwdriver <laughs> at it knock it down kill him one yeah. hit <laughs> you bump into someone and their cyanide pill in their hand goes flying into the person's drink it's like yes oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah she, the target's sitting in their home in Windhelm under a, a more a moose uh, a mounted moose head essentially yes. and you sneak into the vents and untie it from the wall i am yeah. familiar or you set uh, up a giant glue trap in the hallway and the guy gets stuck there and then you watch him die over two weeks or however uh, long it takes for him to go back. Exactly. Looks like you got yourself into a sticky situation <laughs> that is also deadly. Don't go through that door. It tends to stick. And it's just like, whoa, okay, 47. Uh, about, so today we're... Wait, sorry, what about Hitman? But it's all humane traps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be like that wouldn't be like Hitman. That'd be like re- like like relocation man. Yeah. <laughs> or, just, yeah. Like playing fall... like the wacky detective. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like a person falls into like a three by three room, but it's got like a little couch. It's got a mini fridge and stuff, and you're you're, you're comfortable until he relocates you to a field or whatever. I yeah, well, it'd be like a lobster trap, right? Like you have to put like uh, like cocaine and a suspiciously young prostitute in like in like a wooden <laughs> cage, but you've got the cone you've got the cone tunnel going in, and obviously the rich guy can't figure out how to get out once he's in. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. He keeps climbing along the edges and doesn't yeah, find the hole. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but this just brings me back to the middle now. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so today we're going to be going over the two major characters of Hitman, Agent 47, who obviously we've been talking about, and his handler, Diana Burnwood, um, as well as the agency that they work for, which is called the ICA. Uh, a lot of this is from older games that I haven't played, like I mentioned, uh, but the three newest games as of 2022, like, make changes and maybe reference old stuff, like, nothing old is really truly rebooted, some of it's kind of canon or hinted at or whatever, like they're doing their own kind of lore boys canon thing out there like for us thankfully like i was done a lot of the work on this one (laughs) god bless them yeah uh so ladies first uh we'll start with ms diana burnwood uh so you did hear that right lore bachelors that's a miss if anybody is into uh i I wouldn't i woman in her 40s wouldn't suggest getting involved with a woman named burnwood oh maybe not eh? (laughs) (laughs) i mean the writing's kind of on the wall i don't know that also that that's also a like her name also is just a threatening pun the whole the the, the entire series is just about that (laughs) uh diana was born on the 12th of september in 1972 to her father peter lloyd burnwood and her mother nancy burnwood uh she grew up wealthy and went to an elementary school um I went to elementary school, excuse me, at the High March School in Beaconsfield, United Kingdom, uh, which is a real school in the UK. Uh, a little bit of lore boys trivia here. My high school's sport rival was BHS or Beaconsfield High School in the West Island of Montreal because it was just the closest English high school to, yeah. to the one that I went to. Yeah. Fucking Beacos, man. He had to go all the way to UK every time he wanted to play intramural mm. hockey. Like, yeah, exactly. Our, our, our rugby, our rugby team. The bomb. Yeah. <laughs> They kept the Quebecois would rather travel to the UK than deal with the the fucking Anglo's in Ontario, right? Yeah, so. yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, so throughout her life, she attended various real schools around Europe, such as uh, Le Rose in Switzerland uh, and the Wycombe Abbey School in High Wycombe, B- Buckinghamshire, uh, which Buckinghamshire. is the most, the most hoity-toity place I've ever heard of. Her dad um, kind of it- sounds hoity-toity. He sounds like Andrew Lloyd Webber. Peter yep. Lloyd Burnwood. Yeah. yeah. They share the same uh, middle name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in 1985 by George Orwell, uh, Blue Seed Pharmaceuticals killed 80 people by leaking uh, chemicals into the water supply near Buckinghamshire. Uh, and Diana's younger brother, James Oliver Burnwood, was among the dead. Uh, Blue Seed actually has a race car on the track at the Miami Global Innovation Race mission in Hitman 2. So I think it's the second or third mission you have to kill a race car driver and her father uh, and blue seed still has like a sponsored car on the track that you could see as like a little, a little Easter egg there that they dusted in. The brother's oh, neat. anagram yeah. is job. Maybe that's going to come up later. We'll see. James Oliver Burnwood. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an anagram. That's uh, oh, no. an acronym. But... Oh, acronym? <laughs> yeah, what's it called when you get your, uh, 
your towels anagrammed or whatever? Monogram. Monogram. Monogrammed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also don't think it's an acronym, really. It's just his initials. Initials. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jamie's gonna like for for Christmas. He's gonna get he's he's gonna get his towels like anagrammed, like, <laughs> like <laughs> complete fucking nonsense sewed into the seam. Yeah. <laughs> FBI female booby inspector. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, where was I here? Right. Um, one day while visiting her brother's grave with her uh, father and mother, uh, Diana lingered at James's tombstone. And this actually saved her life because her parents, since they were plaintiffs in the case against Blue Seed, were actually killed in a car bomb. Uh, this assassination was orchestrated by Providence, which is, an or- which is the organization that controlled Blue Seed. Um, a lot of Hitman is kind of real world adjacent. A more popular parallel for Providence would be the Illuminati because they're a lot more... Uh, well, I mean, they're fake, but like a lot more kind of popular in popular you culture. You don't know that. Providence is a lot more similar to the real world and very dangerous World Economic Forum, uh, which is a real group of manipulative billionaires led by a man named Klaus Schwab, who recently, on January 17th, 2022, referred to Xi Jinping, uh, re education camp president of China, as his excellency, uh, which is very cool and scary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah. Justin Trudeau goes there as well. He's a, oh, good. He's a bit of a wunderkin at the at the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Go uh, figure, huh? Providence is led by a member known as the Constant. Uh, this position has been filled by uh, various people, including an ex-Soviet spy named Janus, uh, a man named Arthur Edwards, and even Diana Burnwood herself. She ends up as the Constant eventually. Cool. Uh, after her parents were killed, Diana fell in with an arms dealer named Savvy. Uh, and after being betrayed by Savvy, uh, Diana managed to get some of the assassins onto her side, which resulted in Savvy being murdered by her own men. Betrayed, huh? Sounds like he was too savvy for you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just sitting there. She's like, what? And then she gets shot <laughs> to death. <laughs> to death. <laughs> Uh, throughout the Shadow Gang War, Diana actually managed to maintain the stiffest upper lip in the UK. And her university grades never slipped while she was also w- waging like a gang war with an arms dealer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of wunderkinds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, when she got her job. Uh, that's like, that's that's, it's such baloney. I'm sorry. It's just such baloney because it's like so much of schoolwork is not intelligence. It's literally just like time spent doing things right like yeah. that's that's so much of like formative education like the baseline education is just like hey you got to prove that you can commit to doing this so like i can see in like like if you're at like i guess you might be at like those schools that's like alternative learning we don't have classrooms or teachers we just let the children teach themselves maybe she got <laughs> yeah, a, sure lessons, a, but... a bunch of fucking alternative like woke classes at buckingham sure united kingdom dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i got by that's where they get all like the california hippies just like oh yeah i went to school in buckingham sure and it was just like uh, yeah my teacher didn't wear a bra or shave her legs is like the least <laughs> thing i've ever heard <laughs> i mean i think you can get by a lot on like if you have good short-term memory too, you don't need to remember anything unless you're like in math or it builds on top, on top, on top. In, in my degree in psychology, as long as I could remember the things that I studied the hour before the test, during the hour of the test, yeah. I yeah. can just remember it for then and then like forget about it for pretty much. But like yeah. university is one thing. Yeah. And like, I agree that univer- I see university being po- possible, but like, yeah. But like if you're like high school, it's like literally like you just gotta write essays, man. Like, like yeah, you yeah. just you know you like you have to you have to like whatever sixty percent of your grade is homework, and then forty percent is the exam, which you could just memorize, right? And the homework is literally just like busy work. Yeah, I was so you're is, saying uh, you could wage a shadow gang war and also pass high school, Ethan? Is that what you're saying here? Yeah, I'm I'm great at busy work. <laughs> and I'm an inspiring leader. I'll I'll be the first one to say it. My essays uh, are, are what taught me how to write episodes, I guess. It, it's go read a wiki and vomit something onto a page. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's the, how we got this, this B-plus podcast. Yeah, this this B-plus <laughs> podcast brought to you by our, uh, our I won't say failed attempts, but uh, our maybe futile attempts at higher education. Yes. Uh, I, I graduated from CJEP. I never went to university. I didn't yeah. even try. <laughs> I, he, I hate going to school. I graduated from university. I, I just say futile because like, how how useful was it for what you do now, Peter, working in, in cinema? Uh, it looked really good on my CV. Uh, 
Ult- uh, like I had a relevant degree. Ultimately, the skill set. Uh, yeah, I'm just making it up. Frankly, psychology is <laughs> not so bad for management. I have a soft touch, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. you can manipulate people. Is is the best part, right? That's yeah, all you, I do. You hypnotize them. Yeah, yeah. you Use thought it was powers. You thought it was your idea to do a hitman episode. I just didn't want to have to read the wiki myself. Right, or play through the games to be exhausted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Think of all the time I could wage gang wars. <laughs> <laughs> so when Diana got her job, so post-gang war, post-university, when she got her job that the players are familiar with um, at the ICA is unclear. Some point between 1999, uh, before 1999, rather. Um, excuse me. She ended up employed by the ICA, which stands for the International Contract Agency. Um, in 2016, the newest Hitman one that we were talking about, a young Diana Burnwood recruits a young Agent 47 and runs him through a series of tests, culminating in the recreation of an assassination of a Soviet spy named Jasper Knight. So back in the Cuban Missile days, Eric Soders, who is one of the heads of the ICA at this time, assassinated Jasper Knight by sabotaging his fighter jet's ejector seat. So you probably did this, Jamie. You've got the two levels with the yacht, and then you've got the airline hang- the airplane hangar, right. where, of course, you can just walk in and-, and choke the guy to death. But if you follow one of the mission stories, you can sabotage his ejector seat, and he gets launched through the roof of the hangar, which is what kills him. Right, Jasper. <laughs> yeah, Jasper Knight, and, and you go up to him and you say, "You're gonna survive, J.K." And then, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Looks like you won't survive the night. Oh, that's a good to one death. too. To also death. Also a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last little bit was a little bit, a little bit over time, um, I think. But yeah. Jasper. No, I mean, he's gonna. Jasper. He's gonna to death. <laughs> Jasper, I hardly even know her, and then just shoots him in the back of the head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nobody heard that. <laughs> yeah, knock, knock, Jasper. He just shoots himself in the head. Hitman's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Killed himself. <laughs> yeah. So during this test, which is the tutorial for the first game, Diana is surprised by 47's ingenuity when you choke out a security guard and take his clothing, allowing you to move about the facility just in plain sight. And that's the social stealth aspect that we were talking about earlier. Damn, I uh, really expected you to just walk in there and uh, shoot him. But it says here that you choked out a sound guy for a camera crew, threw him into some bushes, then (laughs) launched the target into the ceiling of the hangar with an ejector seat. (laughs) Whatever gets it. It's like, why'd you take his underpants? Like, people can't see it. (laughs) (laughs) Take everything, like his socks and his undies, just like... Yeah. <laughs> freezers, like freezers and boxes and anything that you can hop into people will just forget you exist if you find one of these things right pretty much yeah. uh, i mean it's not, it's not so much anymore it's it's a little less busted people will drag your ass out of a cub like a cupboard if they see you hide in it okay okay yeah um yeah, so- I, I remember seeing a clip from one of the more recent trilogies where it's just like <laughs> It, it shows like the player and he's like standing in a doorway like off a kitchen or whatever and he's like does like a whistle command or something that makes somebody come check and the guy comes up and checks and then you just see like you see agent 47 in front of you and then you see the guy reacting that he's called over and goes like oh, what's this and then like slowly walks into the room and then the camera slowly pans and there's just like a six foot tall pile of naked bodies yeah <laughs> and then he just knocks the guy out takes his clothes off throws him out of the pile goes back to the door and whistles again like <laughs> Yeah, like the AI is is not great. They will be distracted by literally anything. Yeah. Like um you you can like flick coins or like toss 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 stuff. A, a really cool distraction thing to get rid of security is to drop a weapon on the ground. Where if a non-security like a non kind of combat enemy finds a gun, they'll go tell they'll go tattletale basically. And then they'll come back with a security guard and then both of them will leave because they will have to go they go basically dispose of the gun. Which is oh, okay. like it's it's kind of the quickest way to get rid of two people. It's to just like throw a gun, just like leave a gun on like a cafeteria table. Yeah, uh, leave a gun in, leave a gun in a playground and take care exactly. of some people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> of course. Leave some, the, bury some needles in the sandbox, and then that's the best <laughs> way to get rid of multiple people at the t- like when you're trying to assassinate a fourth grader <laughs> in the third mission. <laughs> I saw a really good Valorant play like that where the person got like a really expensive gun at the spawn threw it on the ground, kept their pistol in the corner, and someone thought that it was just an extra gun. So as they were coming around to rotate, they just got shot in the back of the head with the pistol by picking up the gun with the skin on it. <laughs> nice. I mean, 
Valorant is a game that I don't know anyone on the planet who talks about it. It's uh, a lot of people play it. Yeah, it's yeah, really which is big. So, which is so weird. Like, I don't know yeah. anybody like, in, plays in my orbit. Yeah. I know a lot of Do you know people play, play CSGO? Like, I don't know. It's so I, I, feel, I feel like we're too old for the, the <laughs> yeah. Twitch shooter, uh, Terry Twitch plays shooter meta. I have CSGO installed, but I'm, I play like against bots to feel confident because I play against real people. I just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say, though, on the, the AI feeling stupid, and this is something that, like, as I've gotten older, I appreciate more and more in games where, like, like fun has to trump realism like every single time where like if, if they if they program like the most realistic hitman game yet where people acted like real people it's like well you could never do these fun wacky things which yeah. is why i want to play this game right because well, no, like, you could choke a guy out and steal his clothes in the room and l unless he's a specific class of enemy the other person in the room will turn around and see someone who looks completely different oh actually speaking <laughs> of which i was thinking about this in, in one of the missions there's a mission in mumbai where one of your targets is a Holly is a Bollywood director, right? Okay. And this mission is really cool because you don't actually have to kill anybody because there's another hitman in the mission. <laughs> so nice. you, if you follow the steps properly, you can actually just kind of get your targets out in the open so that they can get sniped by this other guy. You never have to touch anybody. That's cool. <laughs> that and to kill cool. the Bollywood director, he's getting his portrait painted in front of a window, right? And then mm -hmm. you can choke out the painter steal his clothes and then pose as the painter and then you like paint the same painting but you put like a like a reticle around his head and like leave that like flourish on the on the thing but the problem is the guy whose clothes you steal is indian he's not white <laughs> <laughs> so when if 47 shows up he's just like we're ready to go yeah, he, he, he doesn't this, look this, anything like him <laughs> this Hollywood director director clearly like hired some like famous painter like you know yeah exactly yeah. and because... he doesn't recognize him like most missions coincidentally have a bald white guy around who you can steal the clothes off of right like yeah. which is like some of the fun but in this one like you just straight up is just like yeah hi i'm uh whatever gurmeed singh i'm here to paint your portrait and this hall this bollywood director is like yeah you look <laughs> smart let's go <laughs> you're wearing the scarf <laughs> <laughs> I have just realized that the biggest threat to we three lore boys is if we ever meet Ocrest at like a function or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> just a big white bald guy, I mean. <laughs> He's the one that gets choked out and replaced by Agent 47, if anything. Yeah, it's it's gonna be him, yeah. One of us, if we do this long enough, we might have a bald guy on crew too. I don't know which one of us it'll be, but one of us. I'm doing okay, right? Yeah, now. All of us still have hair at thirty, so we might be okay, but uh, Yeah. God willing. Uh, yeah, if we're I'm doing like, this at we're doing this at ninety. Check back in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our eight thousandth episode. I'll never live to ninety, dude. No way. <laughs> so, uh, one of the cool parts, like I know we're like making fun of the stealth. The basis for the social stealth system is like as described by the developers in the interviews they were doing is you don't see cleaning staff or security guards or even cops right like if the waiter who brought you your wine was different than the guy who brought you your breadsticks you'd never fucking know which is yeah. the real the, the really interesting part like um like some of the newer games like i said have a, a, it's a class of any called an enforcer they're like the managers like they know who their staff are so you the, the disguise isn't god mode because like somebody knows who they hired and those people are constantly roaming the map and can catch you and I mean, um, like, even more so, like, most of your targets are, like, rich people. And, like, uh, I feel like the richer you become, like, the more you lean towards sociopath rather than empath, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. So you probably, like, notice the serving class less and less the, the higher up you go. So. <laughs> yeah, and then, even then like, some, like, some of the targets who are, again, like, sociopathic elites... Um, do have, like, personal security, and some of them will recognize you. But a lot of them, you're right, have, like, if you get, like, a janitorial outfit or, uh, like, the example I used earlier, like, to poison the guy was, like, making his, whatever, pedophile brunch margarita, basically. Like, they have no idea who you are. So you can just yeah. poison them. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and that's it, yeah. Yeah, who did, who did you say you were again? Prime Minister of Canada? Sure, whatever. Six foot seven, bald guy? I bet. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure, take a drink, no problem. Just, just, this guy's <laughs> Justin Trudeau. He's <laughs> <laughs> putting on, like, the blackface makeup and the turban. He's just <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> Blunging right oh, in. Oh, hey. no. Our, our, our elected leader does not get to get away with that one for free, so. Oh, fuck, no, he doesn't. <laughs> 
Um, so uh, before we get into <laughs> the uh, corporation, the ICA itself, I think it is a good time to have a break. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you bought the thing you were advertised. Um, the ICA itself is not super well defined. It's very much like a shadowy organization. They take on assassination contracts and claim to be neutral. Um, it was founded at some point uh, and operated up until recently when it came about. It A lot of the fiction feels very post-Cold War. Like It probably was started in maybe the 40s, right? basically, uh, and, and op operates up until the new trilogy, basically. Um, where am I here? Uh, by the time Agent... Uh, oh, sorry. All oh, right, uh, they're, they have a board of directors, uh, which was headed up until, again, up until some point by just an unknown man. Uh, he was only known to have a deep voice, but hid his identity completely from everybody, and even recommended everybody working for him, obviously, because they are paid killers, to also hide their identity. So they have a very good HR department, which is just like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, if you start dating someone on the job, uh, tell HR just in case or whatever. It's like some of that shit. It's just like, it's just like, yeah, HR recommends you literally never show your face in public ever. And if someone takes a photo of you, you should probably kill them. HR is like, okay, you should do your best to hide your identity, but also hire the guy with a fucking barcode tattooed to the back of his bald fucking head yeah come on <laughs> he's like the least he's like the least he is he is the sorest thumb in every single crowd as far as sticking out goes for like no matter what what's hr hitman resources yeah yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. uh it's 2022 hr says we should use hit people resources now oh, oh yeah oh my god can you imagine the fucking the, the can you imagine the, the diversity officer at the ica they're gonna cancel assassins yeah it's like you, you, have, you have to like reveal that there are assassins so that you can then cancel them basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> they them to death shoots in the chat <laughs> 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 yeah it's like the email signature yeah <laughs> um so the ica had a rule to never take on contracts uh from a f if the f if a former client was the target however in 2002 they started to make exceptions and this is of course three years after 47 is hired by the time you're playing as agent 47 and in uh hitman one i believe you're sent to kill a man named silvio caruso uh, Diana, just your who is your handler? She's a woman on the radio. Just does not fucking care anymore. It's not even mentioned. She's just like, yeah, he used to be a client of ours, but now he's a bio terrorist, and someone else is paying us to kill him. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that like that's very much like the like ICA junk mail comes in. It's like we've updated our terms of service, and like Silvio Caruso just like scrolls to the bottom so that like it yeah, highlights yeah. the OK <laughs> button and just like slams. It. Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Let's be real. He he uh, gets an unpaid intern to do that for him. Uh, of course, yes. To, to sign the <laughs> consent form. So That's true. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being the unpaid intern who just like clicks OK on Eula's all day for like whatever, <laughs> like Warren Buffett? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Warren Buffett has never clicked a Eula himself. No. I think that's fair to say. At his age, yeah. like I don't, I don't think so. He definitely doesn't know what they look like. He doesn't know what they are. <laughs> uh, but also, he's he an army. I Sorry? only know Jimmy. Who's Warren? <laughs> you got Jimmy, yeah. but <laughs> he's a he's a what do they call him? A uh, parrot head. He's a parrot head for sure. Warren Buffett. Parrot. Uh, parrot yeah, those head. are fans of Jimmy Buffett. I'm pretty sure they're called parrot. Heads. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, parrot head refers simply refers to someone who's a fan of Jimmy Buffett's music and lifestyle that he promotes, and they are. Everywhere in all caps. Oh, well, Good. <laughs> color me a parrot head. I didn't know that that was the term. I'll do one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we put we put uh, Jamie and Warren Buffett in a category like two peas in a pod. You can barely <laughs> yeah. say one's name without referencing the other. <laughs> uh, Warren Buffett is a uh, extremely wealthy man. He's a billionaire. Oh. Yeah, he's one. Of, he's one of like those guys who somehow kind of like hid his like cruel billionaire status a, a, a lot like um what's his name george soros george soros is like a mysteriously rich like evil billionaire but he's part of so many neo-nazi conspiracies that he has managed to completely shield himself behind that 
where like anytime anybody Googles him, most of the results are just about like the crazy Nazi conspiracies where they're just like, oh, this guy must be all right if the Nazis hate him. But it's but it's like all completely fake. And he's like trying to make a media company now that is called something like True News or whatever, which is just like a mobster making legitimate business LLC. Like it's the wildest fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> God, dude. But home, Homeboy is rich enough to completely control what you Google about him. Yeah. And as Warren, a, yeah. As of, as of March, Warren is the sixth richest man on earth with a, a net worth of over 117 billion. Remember when Bill Gates was like the number one richest with 80 billion? Yeah, what a and, pussy. <laughs> it, it, it's, it really does seem like uh, it's skewing in one direction, that wealth gap, huh? Seems, yeah. seems like it's uh, it's going one way here. I don't well, know, guys. two ways, but the, the middle is definitely getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was, I was, I was going to say, I, I can't believe the uh, third guy who didn't make it to the podium is twice as rich as Bill Gates was when we were impressed by that. <laughs> right. Um, right, where, where, was, where, where was we here? Um, right, uh, so the ICA also has a genetic clone program, um, and they've used it in the past. Uh, it doesn't seem to be canon anymore. This is kind of the stuff that I was talking about earlier, where it's, like, referred to, but never confirmed, but still kind of, like, partially canon. Like, they kind of wink and nod to it more than anything in the newer games, but, like, it's, it's, it's very strange. Um, other shadow, shadowy organizations, like the FBI, the CIA, Canadian CSIS, who's, like, our spy program. Hey, hey we made the list. Yeah, we made it. We did it, guys. <laughs> I didn't even know we had a CSIS. <laughs> they must yeah. be doing their job well, then, because... Yeah, Jamie, yeah, Jamie's yeah. got a few ceases and desists, if you know, but... Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> from, Jimmy, from Jimmy Buffett, from playing all his yeah. music on public radio without asking... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a parrot head. I thought I was supposed to parrot his music elsewhere, but I guess not. Uh, 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 <laughs> Jamie, Jamie's out on like a broken down old houseboat uh, in the middle of the ocean playing Jimmy uh, Buffett songs. <laughs> looks, looks like I'm parrot heading to jail. <laughs> <laughs> the guy behind him is Asian 47. Obviously. Yeah, to death. To death. Uh, to death. <laughs> uh, and even the UN turn a blind eye to the actions of the ICA, which is like very clearly based on reality because the un does not give a fuck what the cia does no no the, the whatever yeah and like the even the whatever you said at the the top there the the billionaire club or whatever like oh the, uh the world economic forum to, the world does nothing to address them like come no. on <laughs> look at this state of the world right now clearly clearly billionaires have gone too far yeah exactly um so but even some of these organizations will just help the ica directly uh, with things like information. So they'll call up their contacts with the FBI or CSIS or the UN and just be like, hey, someone is paying us to murder this guy, you know? You want to let us know where he is or, like, his habits, like, if he walks his dog and shit? Like, that'd be great. And the UN is just like, yeah, oh, well, yeah, we'll forward it to you. We got pictures yeah. of him walking his dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're like, hey, hey, where, where's JFK? And the CIA is like, don't worry about him, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one's free. Uh, the services they offer, the ICA, uh, are not free. Uh, the price depends on how difficult a target is to get to. So, like, how many chefs do you need to steal the clothes of? Because every chef is, like, is a bill that's a billable chef right there, right? You, you don't want the guy to have too much wait staff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise, it's just going to, like, shoot, the, shoot that price to the roof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why do I have uh, two sauciers? Get out of the kitchen, you! <laughs> um, Agent 47 with uh, just like a very confused ratatouille, just like no hair on his head to grab. Like, <laughs> just massaging Write his that scalp. Down. <laughs> Write that down. I don't want to draw that. <laughs> what's, the, what's the rat's name in, in ratatouille? It's not ratatouille. Remy? I think it's Remy. Yeah. Remy sounds right. Remy? Yeah. Or, or, that, or that is the... Uh... Ratatouille's a food. Yeah, or that is the guy. I don't know what the chef's... The chef might be Remy as well. Oh, yeah. Remy Buffett. Yes. <laughs> Buffett is French for buffet. <laughs> uh, sorry, top build cast when I searched Ratatouille movie came out as Brad Bird, who played Ambrister Minion. I guess I have no fucking idea. I know who Brad Bird is. I, I don't know what any of those words after that meant. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is Remy. The okay. chef was Alfredo Linguini. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's stupid. <laughs> I, I think like oh, the, Alfredo the, the, Linguini. Less impressed than that. To death. 
<laughs> the love interest in that movie is fine as fuck. That big nose French girl. Okay, she's a cartoon. Okay, isn't she? Yeah, learning learning some things. Pete, that's hentai. This oh, is no. the, this is the hentai lore that Saucy's been waiting for. Oh yeah, <laughs> I would fuck <laughs> Alfredo Linguini's girlfriend. Okay. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna bet I'm gonna bet Mrs. Incredible Pete. Nah, not so much. No, okay. Well, Alfredo yeah. Linguini's girlfriend. You think she liked like pre or post Ratatouille head? Like, like which one's doing a better job? <laughs> Wait, Alfredo Linguini <laughs> himself or the rat? Yeah. No, oh, the rat, yeah, the rat yeah. Stays on during sex. <laughs> <laughs> the rat stays on during sex. <laughs> <laughs> Quack? Yeah. Uh, never mind. <laughs> and she's, he, but he's, he's got, he, but he's got like a neo Nazi tattoo on his collarbone. And she's just like, the rat. <laughs> like that's the thing that shocks her <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um right so uh, the other thing that could drive up the price of uh of the rat that will please your woman uh is is, is is the actual rat that's been hired so agent 47 is not the only uh assassin working for the ICA obviously he's just the best if you if you want like if you want a top shelf assassination it's gonna cost you but it'll get you some 47 basically. there's no agent 48 uh? oh is there okay <laughs> well okay is there no agent 46 then uh there is there yeah. are rather well, the guy yeah. in the yeah. dark room I, I like, that's like uh pete said like, <laughs> like a squeaky door <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the dark room for earlier is just agent one right like the guy who the, the invisible leader He's no like the first hit man no he is not no uh, we will get into the the Hitman series of, of of clone kids basically when we get to forty seven himself, which will come after this ICA section here. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, the IC also offers non murder jobs. You can pay them to just do some spy shit if you want to get some blackmail or find like a conservative politician in a gay bar. They'll do it for you. No, Grocery no big delivery. deal. Oh yeah, exactly. Uber Eats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want cold mcdonald's delivered with a veiled threat they'll do it for you like yeah. don't worry about it they're just like just like uber eats so have to leave it at your neighbor's door and uh, charge you full price yep yeah <laughs> the clients never actually speak to the assassins directly they communicate through handlers like diana burnwood so like i like her because she's a middle manager just like i'm a middle manager i don't talk to robert zemeckis but i take all of his bullshit through three people down the like down the line basically right 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 so that's 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 it's cool where she's just like <laughs> i have no real responsibility i basically tell people what to do and people tell me what to do i just kind of drift baby that's what uh, my sounds, Buckinghamshire sounds and updates. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, upstream, downstream. That's what my Buckinghamshire education got me, as long as as well as my gang war experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, handlers will gather info, procure helpful items like invitations to galas. Uh, you get to walk in the front door of the gala in Paris that Jamie had entered earlier because you get a fake invitation, basically, under a uh, fake name. Uh, Agent Forty Seven's chosen fake name is Tobias Reaper because uh, he is just. Such a joker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they'll also like smuggle items in. Uh, if you replay missions, like your experience goes up with a particular mission, you can level up an area basically in the Hitman games and you can unlock various starting points. So you can start disguised as a chef or you can smuggle in a gun or like piano wire or something to kill a guy with like in a convenient location. And the, the handlers kind of handle all of this shit. They handle all the boring logistical stuff just to make sure they get you in the same room with the guy so that you can say something to death and drown him in his pee. Tobias mm -hmm. right. Reaper sounds like the lamest chili pepper. Like, it's like <laughs> with an astounding 499 on the Scoville scale. The yeah. Tobias, <laughs> Tobias Reaper, you know? Like, I was thinking the band at first. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> like, the, the lamest chili pepper. Like, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> All right, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be a forty-seven on the Scoville? Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it, JD. Oh. Jesus Christ! Right there, dude. I will. I will say the so the Scoville scale is the stupidest thing. <laughs> I don't just, get it at all. Yeah, like yeah. it just goes from like like oh a thousand is like not hot and you're like okay well a thousand seems like a big number and they're like no you want hot try 60 million it's like why'd you make your numbers so big like is, <laughs> yeah. is, is, is heat in food and mmo all of a sudden like we're at yeah. 
them in, in hot sauces, basically. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Like, back We're when like... I played The Division, remember? It was just like, I don't know what any of these numbers mean. I just got a headshot for 2.4 million damage. Like, yeah. was that a lot? Like, how much HP does that guy have? I mean, when yeah. Spicy came out, it was pretty, like, reasonable where it went up to 1,000 or whatever. But we're 10 expansions since then, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah Burning right, Crusade, right, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. It's, it's Pepper Cream. It's Pepper Cream. Burning Crusade what it works, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah uh there was a cataclysm in my bathroom afterwards right right yeah uh wrath of the anal bleeding um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah vanilla that, that i don't think it was ever vanilla but yeah well you went you went back to hot pepper classic recently right yeah, hot pepper classic mm -hmm. yeah. yeah just just, a, just just like i yearn for the days back at the bell pepper when you just had to eat the whole thing and it took you four days instead of like oh man people are just going straight to jalapeno at this point is ridiculous <laughs> I, I gotta say I, and i've told this story before i think on air i've definitely told it to you guys where like my mom when i was young used to say that you really have to rinse your dish as well otherwise you'll get botulism, botulism yeah she's told Comes me from, that not rinsing your not rinsing your dishes well enough which is which is like a crazy thing that my mom heard at some point like this was pre-facebook and for sure somebody told her she, too. she treated it like it was it was from fate like she would treat something from facebook right where she's just like oh okay like can't 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 get botulism right anybody who doesn't know it's like the third or second most deadly naturally occurring bacteria in the world or something yeah um, but she also she's also told me at some point that uh, you can't eat an entire green pepper because it's too spi it gets too spicy at the center and will kill you. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, I was an adult when she told like me that. A, I was like, like a bell pepper? <laughs> yeah, a, a green bell pepper. <laughs> she said, it's just the green ones. And I said, Mom, they're not even more spicy than the other ones. Like, what are you talking about? Wow. I was like, bring me a bell pepper. I will eat it or die in front of you right now. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Again, it's just one of these things that my mom heard and did not critically think about it all. It was just like, okay. Parroted it back. She's a parrot well, head. Where's just <laughs> the middle? <laughs> but no, where's the middle of the bell pepper? Is it bottom to top? Or is it like towards the seed With core? The core, the, the seed core, core, yeah. The seed core, for sure. Yeah. Well, you don't eat the seeds anyway. Yeah, I know, but she was saying you couldn't. Because she cooks with green peppers. And, but she's like, oh, but you can't eat a whole What's thing. It's like, like a voodoo fish where you need to be like skilled enough to take the middle out of your fucking pepper. <laughs> <laughs> you know who did get botulism is uh, Steve MRE 1989 on YouTube. The guy who do opens up like hundred year old war food. Like, uh, yeah, he was eating like corned beef from the Boer War for some fucking reason. Like, yeah, no, kidding, you got sick. Check dude. out some of the, he eats hundred year old shit, and then he'll go to the hospital, and then he'll come back and he'll eat more hundred year old shit. He's just so, so into funny. eating old rations, man. It's gotta make a living. Yeah, and he loves I, it. I, I love how we're like, <laughs> I love how we're like between points here, so we can kind of go off for a couple minutes. Yeah. That because I've been watching the news about the Ukraine, he recently ate a ukrainian mre and because youtube's algorithm is so fucked up it's like it conflates watching the yeah. news with like hey man you want to see ben shapiro's opinion on it it's like no <laughs> why why did you think i would want that i'm watching the cbc youtube but like the, <laughs> the ukrainian news was just like this random ass like mre guy who's very fucking weird yeah. and i posted it in discord as though it was some sort of curiosity and jamie's like a fan no i love it yeah. it's great like, I've seen it before for sure too yeah yeah he like opens up sometimes when you old it, like there's old stuff and you'll know that it's like you should, probably shouldn't eat it because it hisses or some type of reaction when you open it and he goes, oh, it's decomposing it creates gas yeah yeah, yeah. and he's like nice hiss and then <laughs> he puts that onto a tray it's like he like he first arranges everything so you know what's coming up and then he's excited because he gets to put it on a tray and actually open it all up. he's like yeah he's got like this. an aluminum like cafeteria tray that's like all sectioned off basically it's from some war that he just always uses that one and, yeah and he's like let's get this that's out his to favorite a tray. He, he has a second youtube channel where he reviews Tray, like ration trays from yeah, various yeah. wars and armies <laughs> well i watched one that was like a canadian mre that's like pulled pork and he was like and it does look pretty decent yeah. and he was like oh no this is a pretty good one and he's just like ah yes the good standard canadian spork and i'm like are we like this are we like the spork military like well, that, <laughs> yeah, is mean, that like, the thing wait, i should know I <laughs> he knows he knows everything man and i love every single time like let's just get this out into a tray and then there's the smash cut from everything just being onto the tray and he goes nice like every single yeah. time <laughs> and, 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 he sorts shit like because obviously mres yeah. come like like vacuum sealed right so they're usually yeah. like bricks or squares or whatever and he always arranges everything in like a 
in like a perfect yeah. spread on the table, like like a like fucking cards basically. He smokes He's doing, doing tarot. <laughs> yeah, he drinks hundred year old coffee while smoking hundred year old cigarettes, and he flips the camera around so you can really get a good look at him while he's smoking them. Uh, oh my god, dude! I, honestly, really good. Now, whenever I'm at home and I'm like putting some crackers and cheese onto a plate, I'll be like, let's get this onto a tray. Nice. Anyway, for your charcuterie board. <laughs> anyway, Steve yeah. MRE 1989. If you guys want some ASMR old army rations, it's a good YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is yeah. fascinating as far as like a historical channel. It's yeah. just very weird. He gets so excited. I love nerds that are just so into one thing, and that's him. Oh, yeah. You yeah, love that, like, uh, that British train kid who has like the fish eye lens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, post 10, the guy who just loves storm drains and trains. Like. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we're way off. The yeah, track, yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Everybody, everybody still likes kind of the entertaining, like de derailing of our train here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is this uh, is the lore folk getting the uh, the the teaser trailer for the premium subscription that people fucking pay for. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this, is the, this is the bonus content that they're yeah. paying for here. Yeah, let's let's get our contact <laughs> content back onto a tray here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. nice. Um, nice. <laughs> so uh, in Hitman Absolution, it is revealed that the ICA operative Benjamin Travis had been secretly creating a new cloned assassin who was even better than the last ones. Uh, <laughs> at this point, she was a young girl named Victoria. Because the clones are generally not born as adults or, like, aged up. So, like, you you get a test tube baby and then you have to take care of the fucking thing until you can send it to kill, uh, whatever, to disguise itself as Justin Trudeau at a gala in Davos, basically. Right, right. Yeah. Right, and that takes a long fucking time. Because yeah. then you have to take care of this thing that you just made. Like a Tamagotchi? Um, it, uh, worse than a Tamagotchi, actually. Because it's the, the Tamagotchi doesn't disguise itself as another toy to kill your other toys. <laughs> like a little Barbie wig on. <laughs> um, Diana found out about this, which led to the events of the game Hitman Absolution. Uh, Agent Forty Seven is actually sent to kill Diana in the first mission. This is an unpopular game, and I can tell why because it's actually the first Hitman game I ever played. It was on PS Plus in like 2011 or some shit. It's good, but like. When fans of Hitman are just like, this ain't Hitman, and I don't like it, having played top tier, like, fucking primo Hitman, I know exactly why people don't like it. It is the closest thing to, like, a oversimplified, like, modern warfare sort of reboot of, of the series that they ever got to. And it is definitely the worst one I've played out of the four that I've played, but it isn't terrible. Right, like I have it on Steam for some reason. I don't remember why, but yeah, it's not Basically. Modern Warfare like COD. Like you could tactical nuke your targets, right? Like no, no. But he's saying it did to the franchise what Modern War Modern oh. Warfare did to the COD franchise, where they, oh. it was a departure, right? Yes, got yeah, it exactly. Modern Warfare was also like very much like a a shift point in game development, and anything that was made after that for the following six years was very much influenced by the popularity of Modern Warfare, right? Like everything had iron sights, everything got a lot easier, everything kind of you know got very generic for a for a period of time and and absolution was definitely a victim of that yeah uh, cultural that's shift I, i'd say we, we've talked a bit about like how it's kind of like puzzle mechanics and it's about like you know patience and like finding the right beats and all that and i i haven't played absolution and it, it actually has pretty good ratings when you look at like metacritic and ign and stuff um but just looking i I'm go i went to images and the top six images two of them are just the flash art uh, and then one of them is him like, like crouching, kind of like a third person cover shooter, like a Gears of War, like he's crouching behind cover or whatever. And they, like, he's clearly stealthing, like the guy hasn't noticed him. The next one is basically the same thing where he's like, like behind cover, ready to like get into a fight. The third one is like an open firefight where yeah. they're just like shooting each other. And then the last one is like him in a window with a sniper rifle, like getting ready to shoot somebody. Yeah. So even just like those four stills, um, it's... It just feels like different than the the slow and steady kind of pace to the other games. Where if I look up Blood Money, the top six is all close ups. It's three uh, face close ups of uh, Mister Hitman. Uh, one where he's just walking into a manor, and then one where he's dressed as a clown at a child's birthday yeah. party. There you go. So which you can see there's a shift in tone. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how I figured out which one I'd played because I remember dressing up as the clown, like like you you 
knock the clown out or whatever and you steal his outfit now like you're the clown at the birth the kid's birthday party or whatever yeah. uh but he's basically just got a tmp and a clown, clown outfit or an mp5 and a clown outfit jeez Throughout the newest trilogy of games, uh, the ICA is duped into taking multiple connected contracts where 47 is uh, sent to take out various members of Providence or people who are connected to Providence. Uh, it is discovered that Eric Soders, uh, who we mentioned earlier, he was the guy who originally did the fighter jet trick, excuse me, was a mole for Providence and was using the agency for his own nefarious deeds. <laughs> um, he ends up actually being the final target in Hitman 2016. Um, some of the mission stories for this one is he's in like this fancy Japanese hospital in Hokkaido, like up on a mountain for a heart transplant. And you don't even need to interact with him because if you can get into the basement, you can just take his heart, crush it and throw it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> just put some, dish, put some dish soap on his heart and give him botulism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jam, exactly. jam, a green, jam a green pepper up his ass while he's on the operating table. <laughs> well, you <laughs> replace his heart with a green pepper. <laughs> 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 finally now that we've talked about the ICA and Diana we can get into 47 to cap this episode off here um, and this is like we've made no secret of it Agent 47 is the one and only protagonist of all of the Hitman games again like unique among a lot of games that have been around this long and unique among the Square Enix Western reboots he's not like they didn't replace him with like a protege or like a younger assassin trained by 47 where he's like a grumpy old fuck or whatever. Like 47's the guy that's he's John Hitman Basically he's on the box. He's on every single one of them. It's that's it. Boy, break yeah. that lamp and stick it in that aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Um, by, um, right, um, excuse me. Originally, like Victoria, who I mentioned from Hitman Absolution, uh, 47 was a composite clone. Uh, he has five genetic fathers and was born in a test tube. Um, and the one that we play is the 47th clone. So there was a cloning program, and Agent 47 was just the one. Five in genetic the fathers. Yeah. Jeez. Um, in the 50s, five men who served together in the French Foreign Legion uh, and fought in the First Indochina War, which was in the 40s, the end of the 40s and into the 50s. Imagine going uh, to school a... with two dads. That'd be tough from time to time. But I think to you can cut, yeah. Five dads. That's like, that's really Does gay. that kind of like kind of go over the horizon? Like the, it goes past the event horizon, like right. beyond homophobia, where it's just like, right. like two dads, oof, I mean... I think actually school you know, kids... The, like, old principal, the old principal might not be okay with that. Yeah. But five dads? It's just like, what do you even say? <laughs> Depends where you are. Salt Lake City, you might not get a second look for yeah. multiple parents, right? Like, yeah. Or more right, than two yeah. parents. So M Multiple parents, yeah. Even like three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> parent being, parents being the singular two. I wish I had yeah. five dads. Imagine Christmases and stuff. That'd be fun. <laughs> Dude, you, you couldn't deal with five lawyers. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Not five of my dad. I my dad yeah. would be one of five. the five. Yeah, five oh, okay. bobs. Yeah. Five bobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so four these, names. These five men uh, served together in the uh, first Indochina War. Uh, this is a real war that took place in the former French colonies in Southeast Asia. Uh, this is like places. These like, kind of like ex colonies now are like Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, basically. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these men were Otto Wolfgang Ortmeier, Li Hong. Pablo Belisario Ochoa, Franz Fuchs, and Arkadij Yergorov. Uh, after the war, they became criminal masterminds and donated their DNA to a cloning project uh, that was headed up by Ort Meyer. Uh, Ort Meyer <laughs> I donated up my DNA a couple places, too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, when what happens in Nam stays in Nam, dude. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Um, Ortmeier set up a mental hospital in Romania after the war to act as like a cover for his genetic experiments. Uh, the more recent trilogy seems to get rid of the clone stuff, I think. Uh, however, the hospital and the orphans are still kind of maintained that like they they get trained up into killing machines. It, the newer games seem to be much closer to like Marvel's Black Widow, where she was like an ex-Soviet, like, orphan basically who was trained into an assassin at like some like creepy school that just had like a spooky basement where they would like torture kids and turn them to killing machines basically yeah that's how you make like well-adjusted focused adults is uh creepy basements and torture yep. yeah 
Yep. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Lord voice. So oh, it's it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Lord voice parenting trips. Trips. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Some parenting trips. Don't do don't do it alone. Make sure you got at least five dads there to help you out. <laughs> you know? I got five dads. Yep. Yeah, we're we're we way beyond the gay agenda here on Lore Boys. Five dads. Come on. Five dads. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're three. Like we we need to find two more people to have our own lore son. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean we're not we, the the Canadian government won't let us adopt unless we are five dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Ra- <laughs> raising uh Raising children requires uh, basically assembling all five pieces of Exodia where one man plays each piece. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want to be the torso of the dad. I want to be the left that... leg. Wait, there's a torso in Exodia? I think it's like arm, arm, leg, leg, head, no? Oh, is is the tor- I I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm sorry to instantly betray myself as like <laughs> the, the, the cool guy trying to participate. I had Exodia. Yeah. And it disappeared when I was at my dad's house when my I still had an evil stepmom. And to this day, I still think she stole the card to rob me of my joy. Like, I, I don't know where this card went. It was in my bedroom. I know exactly where it was. And her son didn't have one, and I did have one. And I think she stole it from me. But I, I mean, I wouldn't put it past her. She was if we're putting evil. moms on blast this episode, yeah, I wouldn't put it past Monique. Yeah, she was pretty <laughs> evil. What's she, what's she up to these days? I don't know. She better have my Exodia still. <laughs> she's reading tarot cards or some bullshit she's doing uh, anyways oh uh, you know, yeah you know what we can we've, do we've, we can we've probably to... hire a guy to make yeah. mail threats against her at like yeah. a mimosa brunch basically <laughs> let's see let's see we're doing a reading we have the tower that's that's good okay we have the high priestess inverted uh, we have exodia the forbidden one. Oh, she's uh, using it, my oh, in, inverted oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's like smaller too it's like just in the deck <laughs> Oh, this means you're gonna have five dads in another life. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> dude, imagine a barbecue when you have five dads. It would be so fun. Oh, oh dude, it'd be dude, so control, good. The control length of that grill. grill. It, yeah. It's like a yeah, dude. It, that's the, I love how we both went to the same place. The, like, <laughs> the grill. The dad motherfuck- station. Yeah, a motherfucking like grill trough. Like it like 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 two oil drums cut in half. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, that'd be wild. Yeah. All charcoal, baby. Mm. <laughs> they've got like an apron, but they're all connected, and they've got five loops on. Because <laughs> on one apron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Come on. What's like a Monty Python knight that's just like the one big tunic with the three uh, collars? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I want that. I, like, I, yeah. I want five dads now. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I, I got to call mine and tell them, just like, you don't cut it anymore, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> you got four friends? That's the only way I'm coming over from now on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ortmeier, like in the interim before the cloning project, Ortmeier provided his four colleagues, his four step. Uh, I guess they're four husbands, right? If there's four dads, it's not. I was gonna say his four stepdads, but that's not true because they're all together. <laughs> yeah, in this, four yeah, they're, husbands. They're, they're, all, sis- four they're husbands. all sister wives, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Ortmeier provided his four sister wives uh, with uh, cloned organs in the interim before the actual like assassin project, which pro- prolonged their lives. So the the these five men were like lived beyond their years by getting the. Uh, you know the 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 younger people transplants and like the people who make hitman are clearly kind of up to date on conspiracies because obviously like i know that guy who's like q pilled completely a lot of QAnon lore is about like the elite stealing blood from children to like continue to live on the um adrenochrome or, or is that something else adrenochrome no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And like there like I don't even know if this is true, but that's why I sent you that clip from the John John Stewart's podcast where it's like I I think it's true that Peter Thiel, like one of the founders of eBay, has a blood gets boy. blood transfusions. Yeah, he has a blood boy. He has like, gets blood transfusions from young men <laughs> to prolong his life basically. Jeez. How many blood boys do you need if you got five dads? That's a lot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, at like, I guess at least ten, right? Like, you want a couple, yeah. You want to when one's completely juiced, you go for the other one. Yeah, yeah. You got to yeah, recover. Yeah. Let that kid. Let that kid's bone marrow recover, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so beyond the cloned meat organs, um, the objective of this uh, the objective of his cloning project was to create the perfect assassin. Uh, Agent Forty Seven was created on September fifth, nineteen sixty four, uh, in Ortmeier's Asylum in Romania. He had the numbers six four zero five zero nine zero four zero one four seven tattooed on the back of his head. So that's what the barcode is, basically. Call Jenny, right? Yeah. <laughs> six six four oh five zero nine is the date of his creation, and uh, zero four kind of marks the. Like, it's part of the series. He's a series four because it's 40 something. They just got rid of the uh, headphones, Jack. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they moved to the fucking lightning USB adapter. The EU made the, made, uh, the fourth series illegal to continue in that sense, right? Right. right yeah, but yeah, 47 can charge to... wirelessly. So it's really handy, yeah. really. <laughs> the 50, the 50, the five series had to adopt the USB C because, uh, because of EU mandates. So, right. yeah. That was well, it's, it's creating too much electronic waste. Yeah, exactly, exactly. To charge your hit, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then 47 is to represent that he is the 47th clone, basically. Uh, despite removing the, seemingly removing the clone origin from 47 in the newer games, uh, his birthday remained the same. Cool. Okay. So they didn't change the date of creation. Uh, while he was Did young... the s- number stay the same? Uh, there's no numbers on the barcode anymore. He, it's okay. just a it's just a barcode. But yeah, I guess his uh, yeah his social his social insurance stayed the same. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. He also got that pension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while he was young, forty seven developed a brotherly relationship with another boy slash clone, depending on the canon that you're going for, um, named Six, basically. Um, and at one point, An Six boy. and forty seven. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, 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 he still had a headphone jack. That's yeah. why they were. That's why. That's why they were friends. <laughs> he still had like the physical wheel, right? Yeah, like, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. If he goes swimming, like, wheel yeah. in the middle of his chest. <laughs> if he goes swimming when he gets out of the water, like water drains from inside him still because he's not perfectly yeah, yeah. flush on the inside. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, six. Um, excuse me. At, at one point, six and forty-seven tried to escape the asylum because they were young friends. Um, and mm-hmm. after returning uh, to try and free some of the other clones, uh, 47 was recaptured, but 6 disappeared, presumed dead. However, it is revealed in the newer games that 6 would grow up into a man who started calling himself Lucas Gray. Uh, also in the new trilogy, Lucas uh, turned out to be the shadow client that was waging war against Providence and ordering many of the connected hits. So he was telling his childhood best friend to kind of you know, go after the elites that fuck their lives up. Cool. And turn them into, you know, stone cold killers, basically. And oh, the yeah. Attica. Too. So yeah. then he probably like sent him on a couple prank missions, like go into the swamp and then fight this guy, but he just falls in a big pit of balloons or something. Like, yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after six disappeared, 47 had his memory wiped with an experimental serum, which does have an antidote, which is used in the later games so that he kind of realizes who he was to get him onto the side of the murdering everybody at Providence, basically. Uh, and Ortmeier had convinced 47, actually, that he had killed Six and was right to do it. So he had implanted <laughs> lies in his head after after wiping his memory. Um, and over the years, he continued to train and eventually became the facility's best top-shelf clone, uh, with 47, that is. Uh, the French Foreign Legion boys started to get a little impatient with Ort Meyer, uh, as they didn't feel like they that he had kind of produced enough results uh, with all their money and genes that they had donated, which doesn't really make any fucking sense, considering he was just like, yo, here's fresh organs to keep you alive forever. Also, I am training perfect killing machines. And they're just like, well... Like like classic fucking shareholders, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, <laughs> well, we want it faster. I literally knew it was gonna take a while, so I cheated God and extended your lifespan. Like, yeah, like, exactly. what, what do you mean you want it faster? <laughs> well, we got quarterly business reviews. Don't you understand? Like, we yeah. need results now. <laughs> uh, in response, like it's funny that you go there because in response, Ortmeier would regularly threaten his colleagues. Was just like, don't make me use the clone army. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also fair. Like, yeah, yeah like, do, do you don't realize who you're talking to? I'm a very dangerous man. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Up until the point where in 1999, he accidentally disabled security and 47 escaped. Uh, the prologue of the new trilogy takes place in 1999. Uh, this is where Diana hires 47 and you do the tutorial on the yacht that we had talked about earlier. 
Mm-hmm. So a lot of these things are still kind of still in continuity, but in the new trilogy, 47 has no history, no family, no nothing, and you find out about the the asylum or the orphanage later on in, in the newer games, but like the the five dads genetic clone thing is not touched on uh, in the newer games, despite all the references back to it. It's all still like tenuously legitimate, though. Okay. Um, right. Uh, so after 47's escape in the older games, uh, the Constant, who is Arthur Edwards, visited Ortmeier, who then created the 48 series of clone assassins. However, these ones, because the shareholders were getting a little uppity, uh, were rapidly aged into adulthood because, uh, like, traumatic childhoods just take too much fucking time. <laughs> and uh, I'm already 170. Like, what are we going to do? Uh, other than that. <laughs> All of the important shit occurs within the games themselves. Um, all the important assassinations, all the twists and the turns and the betrayals and whatnot happen within the series. Uh, so that would be uh, cover to cover Hitman, baby. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, I've come away from this wanting to use more uh, one liners and to get four more dads on the roster. So, yeah. 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 Same. Well, I want a big yeah. barbecue. That's, that's Two what more I dads want on the roster. I want an extra wide. Yeah. Yeah, uh, two more dads host. on the roster. At most at most three more dads on the roster. If you want to be babby and you want to have five dads, but yeah. I want to have five dads. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I could be. Me and I'd Peter be... can be dead one and two. Yeah, I'm not. I'm... Oh yeah, that's true. We're older than you. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to have kids, but maybe I would want to have kids if I, if I was one of five dads. It's less of a uh, less of a burden. A burden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a business week of dads. You're like you can be Thursday dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Just on Friday because uh, you can kind of get away with doing half days, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. You're the cool. You're Friday, Dad. Uh, <laughs> I've been your Thursday, Dad, Peter O'Donoghue. Uh, you can find a lot of my other work at Lorebice Podcast on Instagram, or you can come, God willing, see some of my work and see us in July 2022 at the Montreal Comic Con if you want. Uh, my publisher has been putting up new work. Recently on Instagram at Squared Idea, they've been doing posts again. So if you want to follow up on some of the other kind of talented people that I work alongside, go for it. Uh, Lad, do it. do it, coward. Other dads, what do you? Where, where can we? Where can we dad at you? Uh, get in the Discord. The Discord's been blowing up. We see people getting in every day. We're talking. We're chatting. We're hanging out in there. Uh, sometimes we get into voice chat with big groups and we hang out. Uh, more often, we just hang out in chats, and uh, we can share cool things like Steve MRE 1989 with you, or <laughs> uh, <laughs> other memes, and have a good laugh, or just pictures of our animals. How about you got a cool cat, you got a cool dog? Come, come on, put in an animal lore, and uh, yeah, yeah. There's there, there's something for everyone in this little Discord, and uh, I'd love if you could join. And... You got five dads? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> we can, you got yeah, five we... dads? Come show them off. Show off your five dads. If you have five dads, <laughs> we have five dads. To the five dads text channel exclusively for people with five dads if someone has five dads i will give you your own um role within the discord don't, server don't don't give them anything what what does the man who has five dads need i want uh, it, 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 he's very flesh. much looking out alexander wept as there were no more dads to conquer sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um yeah, anybody wants to support the show financially uh obviously uh, we do have a patreon patreon.com slash the lore boys where uh you can be our uh patron dad if you will our <laughs> sugar da- sugar dads in a sense uh you can be sugar dad one through five um <laughs> so pa- patreon.com slash the lore boys is where you can find more info on that we got a couple tiers we got a couple rewards uh and a couple Ooh. cool things that we can offer you guys including one of those uh aforementioned roles in the discord server that jamie mentioned I- that reminds me, uh, regarding current patrons, uh, it's our first month with some updates. So if you want to check out some of the new shit that you are entitled to, please let us know. Yeah, give it a give it a perusal. I'll just Homework check it out. for yeah. you. We got more. Uh, yeah, just if you open it up, you got more free content. We have like over an hour of, uh, or not free content, but stuff you paid for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, free we have, paid content. Yeah, we have like a, we've been throwing up a little bit of audio each week, trying to keep up on top of that. So there's like over an hour yeah. up there now, and uh, every Thursday we get you get some bonus content that the plebs don't get to hear. So yeah, we gave you a yeah. teaser earlier this episode. It's usually just us talking about bullshit. So if you like yeah. that, that sounds like your thing. Which if you're listening at this point and that's not your thing, uh, God bless you. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing this for four and a half years. It sounds like it's probably your thing. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I, other than that, if, if you guys don't trust Patreon, we do have Lore Boys Prime, of course, where we are uh, naturally opening up a culinary school. Um, I do have a uh, creepy basement. Uh, Peter's pretty proficient with torture. And yep. Jamie likes sticking peppers up his bum. So uh, we think we have <laughs> all the fixings for creating well-adjusted uh, chefs for the culinary world. Uh, we need we need sauciers who can uh, fugu a pepper, if you will. <laughs> We've got a five-man <laughs> grill and a rat for every man's head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have uh, a horse piss eggs, which if you're wondering what that is, well, you got to subscribe to the Patreon and listen to the bonus content because oh, it comes from that. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, so head on, head on over to, uh, Lower Boys Prime. Uh, you know where to find it. If you don't, good luck and Godspeed, uh, and make sure to sign up, uh, for our culinary school and we'll start sending out invites to select the, a lucky five to share an apron and be our dads in the, in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would cost two day. Lower Boys. Lower Boys. Out. Out. To death. To death. <laughs> It's like Gordon Ramsay. It's, it's a fucking mom instead of Ron. It's like yeah. dad. Like, <laughs> that was so, so much. Yeah, harder. dad in an apron. He's got like his like classic like skewered sausage on like the two pronged fork yeah. of yeah, your yeah, one yeah. hand, thick mustache. Like kiss the <laughs> kiss the cook apron, and uh, Gordon Ramsay's like it's a fucking mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the the bread keeps you, the egg away. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen century eggs? Oh, I know what those are. Those oh, are. Oh, uh, that that's the challenge oh, wow. where you have to sit down and eat a hundred eggs in an hour. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <Korean egg. laughs> yeah. No, those are the ones that are like several years old and have decayed to a point where they can't even rot anymore, and you're supposed to eat it or some shit. Yeah, they're like pickled, but like I think traditionally they're just like pickled underground. Apparently, the I'm on the Wikipedia page now. 